Could the Weber Q1000 grill enough food to feed my family? You can see on the box, four burgers and six dogs. We'll show you our real experience with T-bone steaks, burgers, and kebabs on the grill and let you see for yourself. But first, let's get started and go through the unboxing and assembly of the Weber Q1000 propane grill. Some people ask if the Q100 is the same as the Q1000. The Q100 was discontinued and was replaced by the Q1000. So, in a way, the 1000 is today's 100. We use this grill for camping, really RVing, so it just makes sense to put this together in our RV. The box is big for our dinette, but gives you a good perspective at the small size of this grill. It even fit through the RV door. We purchased the Weber Q1000 from Amazon. The price when we purchased it was $2.29, and with prime shipping was delivered to the house in two days. Let's discuss specifications next, and we'll start to unbox and assemble after that. The Q1000 is the smallest propane exclusive grill that Weber offers. The cooking surface is 189 square inches and porcelain enameled cast iron. The grill cleans up well after each use. It's lightweight at 28 pounds and makes it easy to remove the grill grate and clean inside the grill. There is clearance under the grill tubes to scrape any waste to the drip hole into the disposable pan. We clean the grill after each use to prevent any flare ups. If you have a need to make eggs or similar, the versatility of this grill is expanded with an optional griddle available from Weber with part number 6558. The dimensions of the grill when closed is 14 and a half inches high by 27 inches wide by 16 and a half inches deep. There is one stainless steel burner that puts out 8,500 BTUs per hour. It's important with our family of five to use the whole grill surface. The grill provides an even distribution of heat but needs to be cleaned like any grill to reduce flare-ups. And we haven't experienced any flare-ups or unintended flame or hot spots from the Q1000. We also haven't noticed any issues with the Q1000 in the wind. But how hot can the Weber Q1000 gas grill get? Weber rates the grill to max out between 500 and 550 degrees Fahrenheit. The temperature is great for general grilling, but we weren't able to sear our steaks. Also, there is a five-year warranty that includes the burner tubes, cooking grates, plastic components, lid assembly, and cook box. The other remaining parts and part fading or discoloration is not included in the warranty. Now, let's go into detail on what comes in the box. The grill is well protected and it has cardboard protecting the lid and handles. Everything that you need to assemble the grill is inside the grill. Under the Q1000 protected in cardboard are the cast iron grill grates. As we open the grill grates, notice that they had design in mind. As you will see later, the grates are shaped to protect the burner tubes from grease, eliminating the need for flavorizer bars. What are flavorizer bars? It's those triangle-shaped pieces of metal that act as roofs over the burner tubes in most grills. Now moving to the grill. There is a white tag attached to the grill that provides lighting instructions. Who reads these? Through this video, I actually did. Better question, put in the comments who actually opens the lid to light their grill or do you leave the lid closed? There is a little assembly required. Be careful as the lid is not attached to out of the box. There is a page with serial number stickers. Make sure you keep that for warranty registration. Weber's grill is made in the USA and is built with quality and the warranty and customer service to back it up. Next is the drip tray and one disposable aluminum drip tray liner. Disposable trays can be purchased online and we'll add links to all the accessories in the video description. Also included in the tray is the handle, temperature control knob, and other parts to assemble the grill. The temperature control knob is marked with off, light high, then medium, and low identification marks to help you control the temperature. Here, you can also see the red ignition button. Weber uses a spark generator ignition system on the Q1000 so batteries are not required. One thing we are concerned about is the wiring for the ignition system may get damaged in our RV or just with general use. So far, it hasn't been an issue and it seems easy to get to and repair. We've also seen questions about mounting the grill on boats, RVs, or on trucks at tailgates. Here is a good view of the legs on the grill, and you can see there are no mounting brackets. Mounting is not recommended, but you can make your own decision. Make sure to register your grill with the included warranty card. Also notice the assembly and instruction booklet. Now that we are unboxed, let's get into assembly. Later, we'll show you how much this grill can handle. You may not need the instructions, but we will show them here. There are good pictures and steps to installation. The first step is to place the grill grates into the grill, then attach the lid with pins, and finally install the handle with Phillips head screws. Anyone else still use a Swiss Army knife? I take mine everywhere and it's amazing how useful it is. It's my go-to tool for little jobs and unboxing. The control knob is next. Notice 
The post is a semicircle, and the knob has a female receiver with a similar shape that needs to be married. To the right, you can see the propane tank receiver. We've noticed it as a tight fit to attach the five pound tanks. The tank is restricted by the grill handle and the tabletop. So I attach the tank off the side of the table or surface that I have the grill on, so I have clearance below to adjust how the tank is inserted and screwed on. One question you may have is how many meals can you grill with one five pound tank on the Weber Q1000? We were able to get four meals of steak, brats, burgers, and chicken using only one tank. That for me is probably 90 minutes of grilling and 110 minutes to two hours of the propane being on. The Q1000 is set up to take the five pound propane tank and can be hooked up to your RV or a 20 pound tank with the right adapter hose, Weber part number 6501. We are pleased with the size of the grill and how it stores in our RV. We had a grill with an attached portable cart and it was bigger and didn't fit well in the RV storage. With the Q1000, we are also able to easily put the grill in the RV every night to protect it from raccoons and other night scavengers. We don't see a need for the optional portable cart, as it is small and grills well on tables with the legs keeping the heat well above the table. What is the difference between the Q1000 and the Q1200? The Q1200 is another option in the Q series and is currently $30 more expensive and comes in red, blue, green, black, and almond. It also comes equipped with a thermometer and side trays. But we found the almond color of the Q1000 matched our RV well, and the side trays aren't needed when camping due to available picnic tables or the folding plastic table we carry with us. So, will the Q1000 feed a family of five? Here are a few views of us grilling steak, chicken kebabs, and burgers. As you can see, the steaks are pretty tight, and we could have put one or two more kebabs, and based on these pictures, there's plenty of room for chicken thighs, brats, burgers, and hot dogs. If you like this video, check out this one, handpicked for you by YouTube Next.